This video is about how to install Ubuntu 16.04.1 long-term support desktop into VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a virtualization platform. Ubuntu is a Linux operating system based on Debian. Uh, before I start installing Ubuntu, I want to kind of explain where the word Ubuntu comes from because this video is the basic installation video from which more complicated videos are generated from. So Ubuntu is an open source operating system based on Debian Linux. The word Ubuntu comes from the Zulu language. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who won a Nobel Prize from South Africa, explained it this way. One of the sayings in our country is Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks to the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself, and when you have this quality, Ubuntu, you are known for your generosity or kindness. So the outcome for this video would be to download Ubuntu 16.04.1 long-term support desktop, create a virtual guest in VirtualBox so you can install Ubuntu, finally install Ubuntu, then update and upgrade Ubuntu 16.04.1, finally install VirtualBox Guest Editions, which makes Ubuntu run a little bit nicer with VirtualBox. And then configure Ubuntu Desktop for smaller icons and to show menus in the window title bar. Requirements. A host computer with administrative privileges. An internet connection. Virtualization hardware support on the host computer. VirtualBox 5 installed on the host computer. 2 gigabytes of random access memory. 25 gigabytes of storage or hard drive space free. And a 2 gigahertz dual core processor or better. Additional info. If you got the Ubuntu page, wiki page about the Ubuntu philosophy, a wiki page about the Ubuntu operating system, another page there on how to install Ubuntu, and there are 16 things to do after installing Ubuntu. Disclaimer, while I have researched this material, I can't fully verify that it will work with all combinations of hardware and software out there. So I've been asked to include a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Here I am at Ubuntu desktop download page, www.ubuntu.com slash download. I want to download the Ubuntu desktop, so I click right here on Ubuntu desktop. And I notice here I have Ubuntu 16.04.1 long-term support. That's what the LTS stands for. These are the recommended requirements for Ubuntu, 2. gigahertz dual core processor, system memory of 2 gigabytes, 25 gigabytes of free hard drive space, a DVD or USB port, and internet access. So I'm going to download this. I'm going to go over here. It says LTS event value undefined. But what it's supposed to say is Ubuntu download. I think this is just an error. Somebody updated this page. When you click on it, it should say Ubuntu desktop download. Click on it, and here's a page asking you for donations for around $15 to help support Ubuntu. And what I'm going to do is go click, not now, take me to the download page. Click right here, and it says, thank you for downloading Ubuntu. Here, I'm going to save this file. Now, I have to know where I'm going to save it. So I'm going to click OK. It depends on how your browser is configured, whether it downloads to an automatic page or you can download each file to a separate place. In my case, I'm going to download this file onto my F drive and I'm going to go to Projects, Videos, because I'm making a video. Then go to Ubuntu and Desktop 16.04 and right here in this media folder I'm going to save it. But you can save it wherever you want. Now if I look over here, it says I've got about eight minutes for the download. And I'm going to let it download and then right before the finish I will uh, bring the sc screen back up. Here I am with about 10 seconds left on the download. It's taken about 10 minutes to get so far.
and finally the download is complete. So the next step will be to create a virtual machine to install Ubuntu in. Here I've opened up VirtualBox and I'm going to create a virtual machine to install Ubuntu 16.04 in. And so I just simply go up here and click New. And I'm going to call this Ubuntu 16.04.1 DT for desktop. And the operating system is Linux. And I've downloaded the 64-bit version of Ubuntu. So then I'm going to click Next. If you recall, Ubuntu recommends having uh, 2 gigabyte of memory or RAM. And in this case, that would be 2048. And then click Next. And we'll create a virtual hard disk now, Create. And the default is VDI. You can do however you want to do. I usually use VHD because I can play with it a little more. But if you're not going to use Vagrant or some other program that allows you to play with your virtual hard disk, I would just recommend going with the default VDI. Click Next. And dynamic and dynamically allocated will use only space on your physical hard disk as it fills up, as opposed to fixed size, which once it's created, takes up the entire fixed size on your hard drive. Click Next. And default here is 8 gigabytes, but default, if you recall from the Ubuntu download, is 25 gigabytes. I, I would not recommend using anything less than 12 gigabytes if you're having a problem with uh, hard drive storage space on your uh, host machine. Click Create. And there's some other settings I need to make before I can run this. Go to System and Processor. Ubuntu recommends two processors if you've got them. Make sure you click on two. If not, it runs on one, but it's a little bit slower. Acceleration. I hear where it says hardware virtualization. Just make these are checked. If these are not checked, then you don't have hardware virtualization. And it's very doubtful this latest version of Ubuntu will run without that. Here, that's done. Then I go to display, and what I like to do on display is video memory, I just take it up to the max, and then I enable 3D acceleration, not 2D, but 3D for Ubuntu, to take advantage of the Unity desktop, click OK. And on storage, in storage, I go to controller IDE, click on empty, and then I have to go to where the virtual or the downloaded ISO file is that I just downloaded. In this case, I'm going to have to choose to get to it. And you can see I've got some other files here where I've downloaded before. But I'm going to go to Volume 2F. And if you recall, I was in Projects, Videos, Ubuntu, Desktop 16.04, media and open. Click OK. And now I'm ready to start my uh, new Ubuntu machine and get it loaded up as a virtual machine. Now I've got my virtual machine created. So I'm going to go right here to where the virtual machine is. I can right click and simply click on start and normal start. And up will pop this window. Let me expand that. And you've got some auto-captured keystrokes that you can ignore. I'm just going to X them. And you get a small screen here that says Ubuntu 16.04. And finally it expands to a larger screen. And now I'm going to just simply click on Install Ubuntu. And you've got two choices here. Download updates while installing Ubuntu. and Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. I'm going to click both of these. Click Continue. And then it says the computer currently has no detected operating system. And I'm just going to go with the default Erase Disks and Install Ubuntu. Click on Install Now. And it asks, do you want to write the changes to disks? Now, make sure you're inside VirtualBox when you do this. Otherwise, 
you'll be overwriting your hard disk on your host machine. You can see that this is inside VirtualBox because up here it says Oracle VM VirtualBox. Click Continue. Wherever you are, it asks for a default time zone. Click Continue. In my case, I'm in English US, English US. You may have to choose another one. Click Continue after you make your choice. Ask for your name. Gives you a, ask for a computer name. And this should all be lowercase. And in this case, Ubuntu 16.041 DT for desktop mic. And I'm going to says I got a good password. A good password should have upper lowercase. Oops, passwords do not match. Let me make sure. A good password should have upper and lower case and then some special characters like star, or pound key, and a number or two. Click continue after you've got your password in. That's going to take some time here to install it. And while it's installing, you can look at some of the features. In this case, you can find some more software. There's a lot of free software that comes with Linux systems, and Ubuntu is not the exception to this. And you can actually go into the Ubuntu Software Center and find specific software or just make a search for software that you might want to use. And then there's some... It recommends Rhythmbox Music Player, which is included with Ubuntu. And then you've got, you know, some photo managers. And it includes Shotwell Photo Manager with Ubuntu. And then you've got GIMP Image Editor, and I've used that quite a bit. That's a full-fledged image editor. And then you've got Firefox web browser and of course you can use Chromium or Google Chrome. Chromium is the open source version of Google Chrome. Flash is not supported so much anymore. Basically Adobe has stopped supporting Flash for Linux the last I've heard. So you'll be working with an older version of Flash. And then you've got some Office software and there are other Office software that's not listed here. There's one for databases. And then you've got some customization options. And once you've gone and looked at all those, hopefully you're close to getting everything installed. I'll come back when everything's installed. Finally you'll get this screen that says installation is complete and ask you to restart. Click on the restart. Now it says remove the installation medium. Basically this is for if you installed from a DVD drive but it also refers to wherever you locate your DVD drive. I'm going to click enter and now you're going to have to re enter your password. I'm going to so before you get to use Ubuntu, there are some things you have to do. Here's a list of keyboard shortcuts if you care to use them. I'm just going to close this. And the one thing I'm going to do is update the software. And to do that, I'll go up here to the search and go up, and then that will give me enough to go to the software updater. Click on that, and it's going to be checking for updates. And I'm going to, that says that's 187 megabytes of updates will be downloaded, so I'm going to click on install now. And again, you're going to have to give your password.
authenticate. And this is pretty much an automatic process. You know, after about 15 minutes, you can come back. Now, after the updates are installed, you get a little screen here that says, computer needs a restart to finish installing updates. Restart later, or restart now. I'm gonna click on restart now. And so it's restarted with the updates. Now I'm going to install the VirtualBox Guest Edition. So in order to do that, go over here to where it says Devices and insert Guest Edition CD image. And this comes up. And then I'll just click over here where it says Run and ask for your password again. Yes, I guess I'm having some problems with this password. And then this comes up, and it's going to take about a minute. That's my understanding that some modules for VirtualBox Guest Edition are installed with Ubuntu, but this makes sure that all the modules are installed uh, from VirtualBox. Now you've got some information right here. This has come up, and it's come up a little bit slower. And what this says is failure to download extra data files. And basically it's talking about the Flash plugin installer. I would just ignore this. Basically, Adobe has stopped supporting Flash plugins for Linux systems, is my understanding. So I'm just going to ignore this, close this. That comes up whenever you do the you know updates and everything like that. And just ignore it. I think Linux is going away from Flash plugins also, uh, just using HTML5. So now it says press return to close this window. Hit enter. And after this, let's go ahead and shut this back down. Do a restart here. Of course, you've got uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the latest edition of uh, VirtualBox, which I'm using. Here we've got the uh, password again. Oops. Get the correct password. Well, let's go right here. I'm going to inject the VirtualBox Guest Editions CD. I'm going to go to System Settings, make some changes with appearance. One of the things I like to do is make these icons a little bit smaller. That's up to you however you want to do it. I'm going to change this down to a size of 32. You can change it to however you want, or just leave it the same. If you want to change your wallpaper, right here is a choice. And then on Behavior, I'm going to change the menus for Windows so they show up in the title bar and not up here at the top. It's just a preference I like. And it's up to you whether to do that or not. And there are some other changes that you can do. Go back to All Settings, and that's pretty much it used to be on security and privacy for earlier versions that you would have on search. You could include online search results, but now it's uh, the default is off, so that's, that's okay as far as I'm concerned. But you may want to change it. And that's pretty much it for the install of uh, Ubuntu 16.04.1 long-term support into VirtualBox. And you've got a uh, Linux system running inside whatever other operating system you have installed. Thank you.